on this episode of Money Matters with Jim Doyle, preparing the kids to take over, featuring guests Paul Chauvel and Guy Dean of Organic Ocean with Dane Chauvel and Allison Jones. Plan more, worry less. This is Money Matters with Jim Doyle. For those who own a family business that might like to see their kids take over one day, a simple question lingers. Have you asked the kids whether they'd like to take over in the future? If so, what needs to be considered? Welcome. In the early stages of the business, when mom and dad were the founders, things were often much simpler. They took the risk, they ran the business, and hopefully experienced success over time. As the business grew, there was a greater need for better business structures, requiring that the business either set up an advisory board or look to outside help to continue to grow and expand the business. Now, enter the kids. How do you prepare the kids to take over? Let's look at one family's choices when it comes to preparing the kids to take over. So Organic Ocean is a seafood company run by fishermen. Uh, we've been around for about 10 years, primarily selling to higher end chefs and uh, you know distributors. We started out as hobbyists around 2003 and in 2008 I quit my day job and decided to do this on a, uh, a full-time basis. Dane and I were, uh, were actually uh, friends um, that um, had a passion, had a similar passion about sustainability and seafood sustainability. And um, over time, Dane um, convinced me that it would be a good idea for me to come and join his organization. You have to understand that this company was really founded by fishermen that really didn't know the seafood industry too much. They learned as they've gone. Uh, but the other side of it is they um, you know, our busiest time is in the summertime and they're off fishing and so they needed uh, really somebody that had an operational background, had a seafood background that could come in and really tighten things up and, and, and switch things around. My grandpa, uh, my dad's dad was a fisherman and my dad did it uh, all the way through school, paid his education that way and then got me and my brother out on a boat and we were about four or five years old. I, I never had any intention of seeing my kids go into business, not because I thought it was a bad business, but I didn't think that uh, they shared my interest or my passion for it. And so I'm just working at it, you know, it's definitely something that's come up and you can't really avoid it to some degree, um, but you know, I'm 26 years old, I got a lot to learn. When passing along to his children, it's important that the children have been in every aspect of the business. So it's not just about harvesting, it's not just about processing, it can be purchasing, it can be sales. They have to be involved in all facets of the business. And, um, and I'm, so in order to understand how the, all the pieces work. It's not a, a maybe we'll do it, maybe we'll get sustainable, you know, but we can let that, it's, it's none of that, you know, it is what we're doing um, and our entire company is just soaked up as knowledge you know and, and we keep trying our best to do that. When we come back we'll have Paul Chevelle and Guy Dean join us here in studio. One of the challenges that we had when I first joined the company is everybody was doing everything. Welcome back. We're now joined by Paul Chevelle and Guy Dean. Paul, I'd like you to start a little bit if you can tell us about your story of how it is that you came to be involved with Organic Ocean. So yeah, as you can imagine, it was through my family. Um, I grew up on fish boats. Uh, in the summer when my dad had time, we'd go up north, um, go up on the inside of Vancouver Island, kind of all over. Um, and you know, when I was a kid, it was kind of very casual, two weeks on and off. And then 
um, got a little bit older uh, and we started doing it a little bit more serious. It became my proper summer job. Um, so I learned that and then I would say a couple of years after Organic Ocean started really getting going um, when I was in university. I would come back, you know, my summers, I'd work on the prom boat for a bit and then work a bit kind of in like the picking packing production level work. Um, and yeah, through that, I, uh, I graduated school, went away for a bit, came back and uh, me and my dad talked about it and um, we thought we'd give it a little bit of a go. So I've been here about three and a half years now, maybe four. Uh, and yeah, that's about it. So you started round two. When you were in university, did this look like this was going to be part of your future? You know what? Not really. We, you know, we, I, we always talked about the company and the business because we worked in it and in the summers I would go back. But, you know, we always kind of had free reign to do whatever we, we wanted to do. It was never required or something that was thought of us, I guess. Um, but, yeah, it just so happened that it, it, uh, it worked out really well around the time I came home as well. So, um, yeah, I kind of fell into place, I guess. Sounds like a nice fit. Now, Guy, uh, your story is a bit of an interesting one. How was it you came involved? Dan and I were always uh, friends. Uh, we had a, shared a similar passion in music and uh, would often go to uh, concerts together. But we also shared a, a very strong passion about sustainable seafood and the sustainability side of the industry. And we, you know, strong ethos, uh, same philosophy. Um, and so it was really easy uh, for me to uh, jump on board when he, uh, he said that uh, when he offered me a position and, and said that he could use some help in, w with the company. I could just imagine Dane at that point going, man, I got to get this resource. This is awesome. Well, I don't know. I, I, being in the industry for 30 years uh, just means I'm old. I don't know how, how intelligent I am. I think you're too modest there. You know, with change comes conflict. Let's hear what Allison Jones has to say on the subject. Allison, welcome to the show. Thank you. So in family businesses, as kids start to take over, conflicts can arise. What have you seen in your experience? You know, one of the things I think is that sometimes there's a lot of role confusion and there's a lot of not necessarily the same preparation that you might put into the work with other employees. And sometimes there's even a bit of entitlement, mm -hmm. which can really get in the way of successful business outcomes. And I've come to believe strongly that when you're running a family business, that it really helps to have a third party mm -hmm. who has perspective to help you develop strategic plans that take the whole family into consideration. So Allison, as we look at family businesses and the kids taking over, a clash of perspectives can be inevitable. What tips do you have for overcoming this? There will be conflict in a family business. And so um, know that, right? Accept it and understand that conflict isn't always bad. Mm -hmm. It can fuel incredible ideas, exchanges, and um, innovations mm -hmm. as long as it is managed and channeled correctly. Even if somebody isn't going to go with your idea, you still need to be heard, mm -hmm. right? So there needs to be platforms for people's voices to be heard. Okay, Paul, got to ask you, what do you think about Allison's comments? Yeah, I mean, you know, she makes some really strong points. Um, I, you know, I personally never felt entitled to any degree, um, but it is, it is something that you think about, you know, and I'm sure other people think about as well. Um, and it's, it can become a bit of an elephant in the room. Um, but, you know, on that note, I, n I never thought when we brought Guy in that it was as any training or mentorship for me. It was, you know, a decision a, for the betterment of our company, I would say. Um, just so happens that I can learn a lot through him um, and get a bit of mentorship with that. Now, Guy, in your role, you know, uh, you're the top guy in this role, but you're stepping into a culture that's already there. How do you lead in, in that type of an environment? Well, I think you really need to put your own fingerprint on, on, on the company. You know, you, I, I was lucky because the, the company had, or the employees already had um, a shared vision and a shared passion. But um, certainly, 
you have to set the tone and you have to um, create a level of accountability within the office space and within the operation in itself. So one of the challenges we had when I first joined the company is everybody was doing everything. So there was a lot of um, tweaking that had to, I had to observe first and who, who had the strongest skill sets for various uh, positions within the organization and then really create uh, um, clear positions for everybody within the organi organization. So how long did it probably take those early days to get a bit of a system that you felt better about? Well, I, it's funny, I, I, I said to Dane, I'm going to join the company and I'm just gonna observe and I'm gonna take you know, 60 days and just see what needs to, to change. And three weeks into it, I said, I don't need 60 days. And I gave him a 62 page uh, document, a strategic plan on what needed to change within the organization, both short term and long term. I think a lot of companies would, would hunger for that type of direction. Now, Paul, I understand it, uh, that you uh, uh, work for the company, but the arrangements in terms of who you report to and stuff like that is perhaps a little bit different, okay? Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's funny you ask that because I always come across this question, you know, I'll say, talk to my friends or someone, I'll say, oh, my boss, they go, you mean your dad? I go, no, not my dad. <laughs> so, you know, I've always uh, reported directly to Guy. Um, you know, me, me and my dad, we discuss things um, on our own, the same as you would at any kind of business, I would say. Um, but directly, it's always been the guy. Um, you know, I, he's the one that we're really, uh, that I'm really trying to learn from right now, um, especially within the industry, just tons of experience with that. Well, I'm dying to know, is, is dad a softy or dad a tough one or? I guess it depends what day. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he's, he's, he's tough, but reasonable. I got a zinger for you here. How is it that uh, you ended up with the reporting relationship to Guy? Well, you know, it, it wasn't even really much of a debate when he came in. Um, I think Dane hired Guy specifically for his, his skill set and his experience in the industry. Um, he knew as well as I did that he was going to be the one to teach me more about the industry. And yeah, it, like I said, it, wasn't, it really wasn't an accident to bring him in. and. For me personally, and I think for the company, it was just more beneficial that I answer to him. We'll be right back with Paul and Guy. We always, we always kind of had a tight-knit, really tight-knit community within our employees. Welcome back as we continue our conversation with Guy Dean and Paul Chevel. Now, before the break, we were talking about the early days, Paul. Uh, quite often you hear, um, you're the son of the owner, okay? And that kind of creates its own little problems. How did you overcome that? Um, you know, I think it helped that we were such a small company and I had really been around to some degree since the inception of it, whether it be fishing or working, you know, my summers while I was at school. Um, so we always, we always kind of had a tight knit, really tight knit community within our employees. Um, and I like to think that they didn't really view me in that respect. Um, when you really get down and nitty gritty with everyone, you know, I was in there catching fish, processing fish, packing fish, all that. Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't like I was thrust into some, uh, some sweet position right away. So, you know, I like to think that it, it was the same as everyone else there. And, um, in our smaller company kind of helped make that possible to start. Okay, now Guy, um, you're brought into this role and you see this sort of stuff going on, okay? How does that play out in your world? Yeah, I, I, um, I mean, there, there were times that I had to have conversations with Dane because even though um, he tried not to have any nepotism within the organization, I, there were still, you know, he's your son. You, you still care about him and, and, and that. And so there were times when I had to say, you know, I think you need to just back off. Let me handle this. And you have to have those difficult conversations from time to time. Well, you know, that's exactly what we're going to do. Okay. You've been hearing from the son. Now let's hear what dad has to say. 
I think it's the first responsibility of management to do succession planning. And uh, it wasn't an, an original idea. I went to uh, uh, the University of Western Ontario and uh, got my MBA in the early 1980s. And uh, my mentor there uh, pointed that out to me as being one of the fundamental uh, lessons of good management and that is that succession planning is is key and it's critical and you got to do it and uh, it's particularly so when it's your business it's an entrepreneurial business it has few employees and it has a reliance upon all of the employees not least of which is the founder or uh, the senior managers and uh, um, you know if you get hit by a bus what happens to the business and what happens to the team? Who's going to lead the way? And, and you know, I'm a commercial fisherman. I, you know, that's uh, one of the most uh, dangerous occupations on the planet. Um, I'm somebody that should be particularly sensitive to uh, ensuring that uh, I leave my business in good hands. I, I never had any intention of seeing my kids go into this, not because I thought it was a bad business, but I didn't think that uh, they shared my interest or my passion for it. And uh, they both, uh, um, were encouraged to and uh, got uh, good university educations. One of them is actually still going to, going to school. But uh, um, interestingly, and I, and I take a lot of satisfaction and pride in this, they are both um, interested in marine conservation and fisheries and, and seafood. Um, and one of them actually uh, followed me in the business and the one that uh, I thought was least likely to do so. Okay, Paul. What are your thoughts on what you just heard there? <laughs> You've got a good point. I, I wasn't always wild about going up on the boat for six weeks. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, that, that sounds kind of like what I would have expected with it. You know, as I mentioned earlier, he never pushed us into this or anything like that. Um, but we both kind of ended up doing something around these terms and me specifically in the company. Um, and I think, you know, it just comes back to what you know really well. It's, it's what I did when I was younger, when I was growing up. Um, even when I was in school learning about stuff completely different, it was still things I did in my summer. And you know, you're just always engaged with it, always conversations about it. I like that. Now Guy, it's possible that it might be a few years before uh, Paul takes over, okay? What's your role in help facilitating that, if that comes to be? Well, my main role is to um, take the company and make it very prosperous and, and, and profitable. And uh, whether that's, uh, you know, Paul is the one that uh, can take that over or we turn it around and sell it to, an, uh, to another company. That, my whole goal is really about making this company more profitable than it already is. So Paul, tough spot to put you in, but what other skills do you think you'd like to work on developing between now and whenever that day might be? Yeah, I mean, s specifically off the top of my head, I got to learn more financially. Um, there's just a lot of work to be done there. Uh, and and uh, it's not something I'm very well versed in. Um, so, you know, that's a very specific one. But I would say more generally is kind of uh, high level decision making. Um, you know, when you have to know on big purchases or big sales, things like this, where there's a lot of responsibility with that and you're the one that's, you know, pulling the trigger on it. Paul, I think on what I've heard here so far, I think your dad would be pretty proud of the uh, approach that you're having on this. We'll be right back with Guy Dean and Paul Chevelle. My role is, for all our employees, is tr to try to uh, move them to a better spot. Welcome back. Guy, when we talk about uh, Dane's exit plan, okay, it doesn't necessarily guarantee that Paul's taking over, but it creates the best environment that could happen if that's what he wants to do. Could I get you to elaborate on that a little bit? My role is, for all our employees, is tr to try to uh, move them to a better spot. And, and with Paul, it was really, it's really important for me that he gets a really well-rounded education within the organization. And so, from my perspective, two of the most important jobs in any organization are sales and purchasing. And uh, so I've tasked Paul to be the purchaser 
for the, the company because that's probably one of the most important roles that he can be involved in and make a real impact within the organization. Guy, Paul, I really want to thank you for your contributions uh, here today. Well, thank you. Thanks. They say with every argument, there are three truths. Your truth, their truth, and the real truth somewhere in the middle. Preparing the kids to take over the family business can be a lengthy process. Of critical importance is talking about the needs, wants, and expectations of the parties involved. If the skills are available in-house to make this process go forward, that's a great advantage. But for many families, they need to bring those skills from outside the business, as we've seen today. Developing a greater sense of responsibility, skills, and expectations over a period of time can require a helping hand. As a wealth advisor, I want to encourage families to discuss this early on. There's a lot of great resources out there that can help you with this process whether that's working with your allied professionals or joining a mastermind or business focus group or setting up a business advisory board. It can be hard work, but extremely rewarding. I want to offer a word of encouragement. Have those conversations today. Don't wait. Now I wish we had more time. I want to thank Paul Chevelle, Guy Dean, Dane Chevelle, and Allison Jones for sharing their thoughts on Money Matters. Because financial aspects touch so many elements of our lives, it pays to get great advice. Plan more, worry less.